I think we can get plenty more, many more features for, for this project. Uh, another example of ways that uh, we have been able to partner with people outside the foundation to improve with media projects is how the language engineering team commission, helped commission fonts for languages that didn't have open licensed fonts. Um, uh, I'll let you talk to people on the language engineering team who are here at Wikimedia if you want to hear more about that, but that enabled contribution by entire language community. Oh yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. We got uh, different sorting here. Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, of course, uh, testing is is another area where actually not uh, not being a developer is a feature we want. Uh, we have developers, but uh, from the point of view of a developer, uh, it's not always obvious to find all the bugs. Actually, real users are a lot better at doing that. So we are encouraging uh, like not just editors, but also like users of of uh, Wikipedia and again other projects to get involved in our testing activities, both uh, testing the new features uh, we are developing and also he helping uh, going through uh, features already implemented and helping out uh, you know, assessing the quality. So I want to highlight uh, one example. So there was a, we organized a testing week about mobile uploads when the feature was new both for web uploads and also for the Android and the, uh, iOS applications, uh, mobile applications. And uh, we got a uh, nice amount of feedback, both from the comments community and also from plain users that just happened to know about this and they were interested because they had an Android or an iOS device. And the feedback we got uh, during that week uh, helped the mobile team to uh, fine tune their priorities uh, and actually address different parts that they were not, they were not aware of. So uh, just to highlight two examples, of uh, bug reports or bugs that happened and how they got quickly fixed by collaboration between engineering, uh, volunteers and paid people. The first one was just a few weeks ago uh, when creating a new account was broken. Um, That's kind of important. Well. <laughs> that means that you, you could basically create an account but then you couldn't use it. Um, <laughs> and, well. <laughs> Um, so pretty quickly, this was reported or brought up on uh, IRC chat by uh, Cyberpower678, um, who then, after chatting a bit with the community, also quickly filed a bug report in Bugzilla Wikimedia Award. And uh, all in all, it was pretty quickly sorted out within 40 minutes uh, with the help of this user and other users in IRC and also uh, members of the engineering staff like Stephen Matthew as and Ori. Uh, is there anyone in this room who doesn't know what a gadget is? I think I'm seeing one or two people who don't know what a gadget is. Uh, there is a, a system in place on all the Wikimedia wikis that allows individual contributors outside the foundation to uh, improve and customize stuff on their wiki. And, um, then administrators on, on those wikis can uh, make those customizations default or, or offer them to, to lots of users. And uh, there was a bug in which gadget settings couldn't be changed at all. Like we had rolled out a new version of MediaWiki and all the people on those individual wikis couldn't change their gadget settings. That kind of sucks. So a volunteer, Dimitro, reported it. Um, another volunteer, Montmorex, confirmed it and set a uh, set it in Bugzilla as saying, this is incredibly high priority. This is a, a blocker. People can't get work done. And then two people who work at the foundation, Ronan and Greg, saw that, fixed it really fast. And uh, it sounds like it didn't have too much of an impact on people because uh, community members reported that bug quickly. If those community members had just talked amongst themselves, um, maybe on Wiki or on Twitter or on Facebook and complained amongst themselves, it wouldn't have gotten fixed. If, if, you know, if people tell us about problems, then we can address them. Uh, another way that volunteers can help is by gathering issues and prioritizing them. Chris Stipe here uh, worked a lot with a volunteer named Jack Phoenix, where there was a collaboration where uh, Jack gathered issues having to do with uh, how functionaries on our wikis 
uh, deal with certain kinds of problems like spam and abuse and uh, do the things they need to do. There were bugs in those tools. There were features they needed. Jack organized and uh, liaised with all those people and talked with them, got information from them, and organized things into a roadmap to help give Chris the information he needed. Um, we'll be taking questions uh, probably in about 10 minutes or five minutes. Um, Andre, they talk, uh, people think about current problems. Um, so what we also have is uh, bug days, which means there's uh, dedicated times to take a look at a certain set of bug reports and feature requests in Maxilla. So uh, one pretty successful one was a bug day on uh, skins and page rendering, like skins, how you make uh, MediaWiki look in your browser. And uh, we went with developers and uh, also other community members who are not developers, but just were willing to test and try to reproduce older tickets. Through all those existing tickets, we closed some that were not reproducible anymore, and we discussed whether the priorities uh, were still correct, or sometimes uh, we corrected them when we saw something that probably needs uh, sooner fixing. So another, another area, for instance, is uh, spreading technical news, uh, translating them to other languages, or even translating them in a, in a language that plain users can understand. This is a very important task. Uh, we have now this Tech News Weekly, which is something that if you don't know, or if you are not reading, I strongly recommend you. Uh, follow that link, and you'll see how to get it So subscribe. And this task is being done almost entirely by, by volunteers. And you can, you can help spreading those news in your own communities because uh, knowing about, I don't know, visual editor, flow, uh, echo notifications, know, knowing about all these developments uh, as they happen, or knowing about them when they are deployed on your, on your specific, we can make a whole difference. Uh, if you know months before about that, you can perhaps look at the mockups, you can uh, be part of the early testing, you can get feedback, and you can influence uh, the development of those features. Uh, and one of the people who works a lot on communication in general is Guillaume Palmier, who works in our team as technical communications manager. He's currently at his home in France working on explaining uh, and working with the French Wikipedia about visual editor. Uh, so those are some success stories, but there are also some areas and some places and some times when we need better collaboration uh, and so we're going to talk about a few of those, starting with testing. Yeah. So I, I want to insist with testing. I explained already before that actually being a plain user is the best thing uh, when it comes to testing. We really need more of uh, more participation of, of the users, being editors or even readers uh, of, of uh, our projects. Um, there's actually another link here that I just added. Uh, Awesome. A few minutes before, uh, because uh, we are now putting our focus in, in what is called automated browser testing, and um, actually this is a term that might scare off many, many people. It scared me off, um, but actually uh, getting involved there is, is really simple. You know, all you need to know is plain English, and uh, actually your knowledge of plain English plus your knowledge of uh, your Wikimedia project, the Wikipedia, Wikisource, etc., is very very useful for uh, then the testing team to, to write those uh, test cases that then will get uh, checked automatically on a daily basis or even frequently. So you can get involved in that report. It's very, actually, it's, it's very fun. I, I encourage you to, to click on, on this link and see how easy it is to get started just by describing uh, something that is really good. How can we click on those links? Sorry? Uh, so this is the talk page of the Wikimania page about this oh. this talk. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you in the end in a non full screen version so you can see. Um, another way is uh, bug report cleanup and issue request cleanup. Um, so users report issues uh, in the Bugzilla with the software and um, this is called triaging. It means like making sure there's enough information in there, good steps to reproduce, that um, version information or which browser was used, for example. And uh, it's a pretty easy way to get involved. It doesn't need any technical knowledge. You just try to see if you have the same problem. 
for example, you might use another browser and there you don't see the problem. So you add a comment and say, uh, I use that browser and I cannot reproduce it on that website. And um, you can even do like uh, two or three bug reports per day or so. It, it can be just five minutes that you help developers to save some time by making the reports for them better. And uh, we have some great community members uh, that help with this and are pretty active, but uh, you can never have enough of them, of course. Plus, uh, you can choose a dedicated area which you're interested in. Um, plus, many triages I've seen uh, become, at some point, after a few months of reading tickets, motivated to try fixing it themselves and become developers. So it's also a great way to uh, get started with developing. I think one analogy I would make there is just like a lot of people start editing Wikipedia by cleaning up little typos. Similarly, a bug triage is a way to start understanding the technical side of things just by taking that first sort of superficial skim at things. The engineering community team is also interested in partnering with other open source projects and other organizations where we don't have as much expertise. And uh, I'm going to just sort of leave that broad right now. If that just perks up your ears, and maybe you say something like, oh, hey, I am a big, a big accessibility proponent. I think that MediaWiki should be better at uh, how it works for people with disabilities, for instance. Or, hey, uh, I work on PHP, or I work on uh, PostgreSQL, or something like that, then uh, and I would kind of like for media to be working better with us. Then talk with us because we uh, nurture those partnerships and help improve our uh, relationships with us. So we're going to say a couple of things that you can do to, to read for context and to help. And then we're very happy to take questions and start talking with you a little bit more. We have the weekly tech news, which Kim mentioned. We also put out a monthly engineering report, which gets emailed out to Wikimedia L and to Wikitech L and gets posted at blog.wikimedia.org. And every time we do that monthly report, we also put out a summary that's like, I don't know, eight, 10 paragraphs long. And that is a summary that's meant to be read by ordinary humans who are not developers. Uh, and so you should be able to read that. And uh, I will make sure that I link to an example of the human accessible summary. And then if you'd like to help, you can subscribe to Wikitech Announce or Wikitech Ambassadors. Uh, you can read some of these documents, and you can go to Andre's talk. So Kim and Andre, you want to talk through this a little bit? Uh, ju just to mention that I really recommend everybody to subscribe to Wikitech Announce. So this is not a discussion list. It's just one way announcement, uh, to send an announcement in one way. And actually, we do it only when there is an activity you could join. Uh, so it is very uh, a simple, simple way to just to stay connected without polluting your email, so your mail, or so And then, if you feel more involved, uh, you are very active in a specific project, uh, then uh, we strongly recommend you to subscribe to Wikitech Ambassadors, which is also low traffic. And I think as we only have ten minutes left, uh, I just say if, if you want to know more about bug management and uh, how to get involved. Uh, there's a talk specifically about this on Sunday at, uh, well, at 3, because it's the third one in that slot, so I think it's actually around 3. So I think uh, there might be one question, Tristan, I think you have a question, but I also wanted to um, ask, how many people here knew that they could get the weekly tech news delivered directly to their talk page on their home wiki? Okay, Lydia, you count. You, Andrew, you kind of knew. You like it came to you in a dream. I think I could have. I think I, I think I knew the what. I knew the weekly thing. I knew that some people would get delivered. I probably could have shared it with others. No problem. Now you know. So now you know. <laughs> All right. Fine. So, um, does someone have a question to start with, or can I ask you a question? Tristan, did you have a question? No. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I have basically one suggestion. The Universal Language Selector? Yeah. So, I mean, we got announcements all right uh, at that time. But I think still users got into trouble and they tried to get it on off the road uh, because it rolled out. So, maybe some kind of a video, some short video tutorials, how they could be in English to start with. Uh, and maybe we still have part of your uh, announcements to help. Uh, 
Okay, let me make sure uh, I got your suggestion right. So when the Universal Language Selector was rolled out, there were announcements put out on wikis and, and on mailing lists and things like that. But you were mentioning that still some users got into trouble. Uh, they had difficulty using it. So you were suggesting that uh, some short video tutorials, which could be in English to start, could be included in the announcements. Can you tell me more about, um, so is your impression that users got the announcement, but they still didn't, and even though they read it, they still didn't understand how to use ULS? Yes. Okay, all right. So um, that's, uh, that's certainly a suggestion that uh, we should think about. The upcoming uh, uh, visual editor. The visual editor. I believe, uh, I believe in both cases the problem is not lack of information of materials. The problem is that we have so much information and so many different channels that the average <coughs> person contributing in a specific project in a specific language doesn't get a percentage of that. So uh, maybe my memory fails, but I think there's videos actually explaining uh, the universal language selector because the language team is quite active blogging about their development. But it can be perfectly be that those videos were not linked in any of those announcements. Uh, and well, there was a video made oh, by, yes. by a volunteer, actually, that we then published on the blog. Yeah, yeah, but, but I understand. So I think we both are right. <laughs> the problem is that we have a lot of information, also many different channels, that for a single editor is really difficult to follow up. And this is the important role of the people that are in both areas, because they can channel what really matters for a specific community. The ambassador. Tristan, do you have a question? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Should I disregard your hands because they're actually taking pictures or something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lydia. What's your biggest challenge right now? What is our biggest challenge? Okay. Uh, why don't we sort of each speak to our area? Maybe Andre you first. Uh, I have to think first. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> His yeah. first challenge is to think. <laughs> <laughs> You and know. then Kim and then I Well, so I think my, my challenge, which is not mine, but I think is, is a, a priority, is currently there's, a, there's a, a big gap between the professional developers that work full time and then the contributors, technical contributors, that they are doing this as a hobby and, and they can just contribute, you know, uh, evenings, weekends, etc. The, the gap is too big and, and we have a problem and I think this problem can increase if we don't do anything. So it's finding ways to uh, just make this, this gap smaller and, and make it easier for hobbies to take roles that a professional would take and the other way around as well. And of course getting the users also plugged to this because to make all this a continuum. It's not easy but it needs to be done. I have two huge challenges in my work. Trying to make processes that scale and trying to inculcate empathy in others. Those are the two big things. They come up every day, they will continue to come up. I don't know if I'll ever solve them. Uh, how, I know, we know, we know, we know in terms of best practices how to really mentor one person incredibly hard and uh, nurture that person really intensely and turn that person into a, a very good tester, uh, a good documenter, a good marketer, a good system administrator, a good developer, and so on. How can we scale that to the size of what the Wikimedia movement needs? Because we are just massively understaffed as a movement with people with technical skills, including technical translation skills, technical uh, design skills, uh, bug, bug finding, bug triaging skills, all those, we're understaffed as a movement. So we need to scale, but how? What is actually efficient? So that's an issue. And then there's a lot of problems in life that would be so much easier if people would try and think just a second from someone else's point of view. But people, like I can't be anyone's parent and so if someone got, gets to the age of 15 or 20 or 30 or 40 without that instinct for empathy, and then they come into our projects, what do we do? Not just in the short term to help people, you know, to, to make people act nice towards each other, but to actually
cause empathy? That I don't know. We got some ideas for things to, you know, for band-aids, but I don't know. Those are big, those are the big things for me. Oh. Zero no, not zero. Uh, <laughs> so, so for me, I, I think um, Bugzilla, which is the tool we use for uh, managing software bugs and enhancement requests, um, make it work better for everybody, uh, which is pretty vague. But that means, for example, for uh, users to make it easier to report issues, and um, for developers, for example, um, make it easier that users report good bug reports with enough information that uh, developers uh, can, well, I use easy too much, but, uh, but, but it's easier to find the issues that are important, um, only getting the mail notifications that people are interested in, for example, so making it more convenient, but um, thinking about this and breaking this down into subtasks is pretty interesting and complex. I wanted to ask, where do you get your Wikimedia tech news? Because then we can, you know, spend our time more on stuff that people are actually using. Wikitech. Okay, so uh, someone said Wikitech. So Wikitech L, which is the uh, developer mailing list. Amir? Uh, Wikitech Ambassadors. Wikitech Ambassadors, which is a, a list that we post to sometimes. Blog. Blog.wikimedia.org. Yeah. Okay. Is there anyone who finds that uh, Facebook or Twitter is a significant source for them of Wikimedia tech news? Okay, uh, that's you. So anybody you using those? Um, I think it's not, for me, not really a source. Because I it's not used much currently. Facebook and, and Twitter? Okay. It's not a considerable source for me. Okay. okay. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just wondering what now. Yes. I, I think it's a really good resource for like students. I, I'm attending college and like Facebook and stuff. Like I'm checking on stuff for me like every day. So if you can put that on, and I think it's a good opportunity for me to like share to like make the word get spread, like more people get to know the technical stuff. Yeah. There's, a, there's a media wiki Facebook page. There is a media wiki Facebook page. I personally, as uh, you're, you just probably did some buttons there, Kim. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to point. So I am not on Facebook myself personally, and uh, I am sort of on Twitter. We have a MediaWiki, Twitter, and Identica presence, and there is this uh, uh, MediaWiki page, and and on G Plus. I have not directed my team to put a bunch of effort into any of those. Um, if I get enough data, maybe that will change. Arthur. Yeah, I actually just realized, even though I primarily get most of my media <coughs> technical information from Wikitech, I often don't know about big deal like uh, deployments or exciting new things that have found, found their way to production until I hear about it on Facebook or Twitter. So I actually get like big announcements stuff on Facebook. Or Twitter. Okay, so so Arthur, as a technologist who works for the foundation, his day to day work. He's hearing about stuff from Wikitech L, for instance, or from the Hashi Media Wiki IRC channel, for instance. But uh, the big news that affects everybody in the Wikimedia world, you hear about from Facebook and Twitter, and then okay, cool. Cool. So thanks, thanks to like Greg's posts about like upcoming upcoming deployments, I've kind of now known about more stuff that's going on, which is. I mean, before that, I had no idea, which is actually kind of bad, so the opposite. <laughs> you, would, you would think that people would tell us when they're deploying stuff, but beforehand we weren't. So um, that's definitely been helpful, but it's it's really, uh, the format is it could probably use somewhat of an update on how it's disseminated. 
for more for less technical people. Okay, so Greg Grossmeyer sends an email out every week to Wikitech L and Wikitech Ambassadors saying, here are big things that are coming up in the next week in terms of deployments. And currently, I think he's not really adjusting the Wikitech Ambassadors format too much to make it like super accessible to non-technical people. Although he makes some adjustments, but maybe he could be using do to more. But yeah, but so far I mean, it's, it's excellent for the uh, for like technical people, All especially right. I, like it's very. I hope we can run one or two minutes <laughs> over, Daniel. I just wanted to add if you like what the opposite of the summary. If you're like into the super detailed, what are ops doing as root on the server? You can go to the Wikitech Wiki page SAL server admin log, which really gives you details of like that person uh, changed DNS now. That person like upgraded packages here, like very detailed. And that same information is also sent out to Twitter and to Identica. Um, there's also a server admin log for all of labs. That's the link right below it, but it does not go to Twitter. Like example, yesterday, Gimp the Wikimedia, but org was down, and there that would have been the place where you hear about it first, like when somebody's working on it. Uh, yeah, so we've been maintaining a Facebook group as language engineering for the past year or so. We have 126 members now. We try to post a few things every week, and sometimes we get some discussion. So it's, it could be better, but I, I, I think it, like it's working for some group at least. Uh, but the problem, problem remains how to disseminate sure. to everyone. Yeah. I just want to ask one more follow up question, then wrap up so people can get to you know, someplace else if they need to. Is there anyone here where their primary place they're getting Wikimedia tech news is some other place that we haven't mentioned, like a village pump or something? Uh, yes? Is that there is the, or certainly there used to be the tech news was we circulated several other newsletters. So there are people getting tech news through, say, the Internet Science books. The the, so the Science Post doesn't have a weekly tech report anymore because Harry Burt got life. Uh, like happened at him. I think he's in his senior year at Oxford now. So um, I would love for someone here uh, who does not work for the foundation, because I know the signpost really wants to be independent, uh, to take a look at the tech news and maybe do that bit of every week, just recirculating the tech news in the signpost or in your local signpost work alike, like the, the courier or whatever, um, on, your, on your local wiki. Because the tech news is meant to be recirculated and reused by other people. I'm glad you like the tech news. Thank you to Otter and to Guillaume, especially for doing so much work on it. All right. Thank you all very much. Uh, and just to, uh, I, as you can see, yeah, so on the Wikimedia talk page for submissions and collaboration with media engineering, that's what we've done here instead of slides. So there's lots of links. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was a bulwark against the side, right?